hopefully. Okay. I think it depends on how you look at it too. Like you could say, if you're thinking about creating more life for the world to continue, that it would be women because you need men to have children in the first place. But you could also say men because they're actually fighting the wars, and PTSD is a huge thing. There oh. was actually a study Wait, that so women... Just... So if we're talking about war as in killing people and having less people, then I would say women would suffer because there's not... You see what the argument I'm trying to have? But then I, I would say men if you're thinking about just fighting in war. Like so they're, they're prim, prim, just primary overall. Yeah, overall, I would guess say men. Okay. Um, I guess I would say both, honestly. But I mean, I know this is an option, but I think the people that, like, you know, pass away in said war are probably, like, the most of the victim. But there's obviously other victims, too, so both. So you think the, the primary victims would be the people who are fighting and dying in the war? I think anyone that's dying due to the war. Like, not necessarily, you oh, don't okay. have to be fighting to die in said war. Would you say that wars have an equal conditional standard on both, or one suffers more than the other? I mean, I think that everyone suffers when it's war, you know? Like, I think war is just bad, honestly. Well, then, actually, just so you know, there's no actual way to conceptualize any other answer than either they suffer the same or one suffers more. There the can't same, be yeah. any other answer. Either both of them suffer the same or one suffers more than the other. I think my answer is that whoever's affected by violence directly. Well, that would be one or the other. But that's what I'm saying. is It might yeah. be men who are fighting, but if you're fighting in a town where women live and they are also getting then attacked and they're next the to a bomb that blows up and they're not part of it, but they mm -hmm. just were. Or maybe the woman's madly in love with her husband and he just died in front of her. That's mm -hmm. going to affect her maybe worse because he's not alive to remember then it. She has to live with it the rest other. of her life. So anyone, regardless of gender, that's directly affected by the violence of war is going going to be affected whether they were participating yeah. or not. So it's still going to be one or the other. Primarily men because they're mostly fighting, but we fight in areas where women and children live. I totally agree yeah. that <laughs> men fight in areas where there's women and children. Yeah. Absolutely. But I'm just saying that I can't logically think of an answer other than it's either they suffer equally or yeah. one suffers more than the other. Like if they're both affected by the violence. Like yeah. you might not be perpetuating violence, but if you live around it, you're going to be affected equally as someone who's participating. Okay. Witnessing people die around so you, it's, about equal, it's going to affect you for life. Yeah. Yeah. So you Even think if it's you about didn't equal? Die. Yeah, I think it's equal. Anyone okay. who's uh, seeing the violence is affected. Gotcha. Hmm. I'm going to say men. Yeah. And back to the bear thing. Would you expect a man to save you from a bear coming up charging after you? I'm going to say, hell yes, I would. I ain't too proud to beg. Like, I'm a tough bitch, but yes. This goes into men, like, stepping up. Step up, men. I'd but say also th accept us flirting with other men while we're in a monogamous <laughs> romantic relationship. If what does the other. this have to do with the I said I'm a tough bitch, war. I'm a strong, I'm in control, but if a bear's coming at my ass, like I said, I ain't too proud of it. I love a man around to help out with, I'm an acts of service love language gal. I'm, I'm down for a man to be around and... Can you just use your goddess energy? Always, that too. It's the yin and the yang. That's what people don't get, right? Mm -hmm. It's so, the, I talked about binary earlier. I don't know why, you probably think your wife is a goddess. Why are you mocking it? No, <laughs> I don't. Probably... That would oh. be blasphemy. Oh, okay, well. Definitely don't, wouldn't, wouldn't say my wife's a goddess, or that's you, too bad. or any woman Look, would be I a have goddess. No, I that's have, insanity. Okay. <laughs> okay, I have no problem with traditional gender norms, right? Mm -hmm. Men being strong, I'm sorry, I have to interrupt you. In, You've women. totally derailed the conversation No, I'm, I was getting to it. No, no you weren't. You've okay. totally derailed the conversation. I was talking about, okay. Yeah, so you which one? Primary? About, oh, your goddess energy flirting, no, whatever. It's all power, right? And so hold we on, have it. Did men you... have to be this way to be powerful. Yeah, I'm women sorry. Ha I have to on. interrupt women you have once to, more. Okay, I'm ready I to have talk to, to this cup. I have women to have stop. to be this way no, to be powerful. No, you have to stop talking. You missed the point. You're in your in the boxes. I just told you, you've just derailed the conversation. That's what does nature. that have to do with anything? You brought it into this because you're like, oh, an no, monogamous yeah, relationship I, flirting? I said something about it. Like, no, I it's said so that. What, arbitrary. What does one have to do with the other? Okay. But it's also that you how, guys keep going after I, that. Do you, do you not do you want me to point are you out? <laughs> like, are you just not listening to what I'm saying at all? We moved on from the bear conversation. We were going around the table asking all the panelists. The reason I said men, I said men stepping up and in war, right? Men being in combat, being in battle. That goes back to my original thing of why I said men. It's not confusing. Like, no, I don't think so. Right. He looks confused. You weren't. Well, that's so from his perspective, it's because he's just looking for the direct answer. 
and then because usually on the second round of the question then we can get into the qualifiers i'd say those direct, uh, directly affected by the violence whether it be men or women oh the question was so the like, question is who's the primary victim of war you have yeah. to choose one men or I women have to choose what? men are the victims of war Bill, I feel well, like a woman's okay, witnessing war one. and you watch but someone you explode in front of your very eyes, that's mm. going to change your life in a horrible way. Yeah, but but even if you're not a part of it, watching humans die is... But would so. it be worse for you to be the person who exploded or the person watching the person explode? Personally, I th Let me especially ask you, watching children die, it's hard you, to keep going in that. Do you have, do you have love, loved ones who've passed? I, I mean, yeah. I haven't experienced like a life partner or a sibling or a parent mm -hmm. dying yet, actually. So. But you do recognize that every single day, tens of thousands of people have people who are close to them pass away and that they can recover from that and they do most often recover from that. Yes, but someone dying in their sleep is different than so exploding. Have you, have you ever seen someone die? I've only seen like gore images no, 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 no. on the internet. In, per in person. I have seen dead okay. bodies, but I haven't watched so, someone die in front of so me. So you said if somebody passes away in their sleep, that happens. I was in hospice care when my grandma uh -huh. passed away. Now, it was sort of essentially death by old age, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was actually extremely brutal, even under the care of a doctor, sure. yeah. to see my grandmother go through the actual process sure. of death. Yeah, I'm sure. It was not pretty. pretty. I know. It was I'm, my first I'm time sure. ever seeing that. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, that is not like a sort of, at least compared to if you're violently attacked or you're in a car crash, that is the way a lot of people die, is they're in hospice care, they just kind of pass away. End of life, even under these circumstances where you're under the care of a medical prof professional, it's not a pretty thing. Oh, I, I completely sympathize with you. I, I think uh, watching anyone you love die, whether it's graphic or not, just watching them kind of slowly lose their spirit and not be the same bright light they were, like, of course, that's awful and sad. Even if they made it to old age and they had a full, fulfilling life, anyone you love no longer being here is going to be well, hard. Just, just but that home, is very different than watching a small child blow up right, a bomb. But, but just you know, to that's just the not point, the same. Like, it's going to traumatize you in a whole other way. Even in, in this oranges. hospice example that I provided yeah. with my own grandma, it's not like how it's portrayed in the movies where they're totally lucid and then they just kind of close their eyes and they go away. They like mm -hmm. they are like fighting mm -hmm. and it's disturbing and yeah. it's heavy. And you see the eyes glaze over. Mm -hmm. They're still alive though. They're still yeah. trying to breathe. It's frankly disturbing. But that's what you're saying is you're already admitting that that affected you. So imagine watching hundreds of people die like even more sure. violently. That's that's going to affect you even more. But if you, you can, can already comp But you understand potentials. Like, oh, yes. So if we're looking Brian? Was it fatalities or yeah, just No, in just primary impacted? victims. However you think of victim. Yeah. So but think about potentials. So back to non-intuition just reason for a second. Yeah. If you're thinking about the potential <laughs> <clears throat> you would agree with me that if somebody's dead, all potential is gone. True. Yeah, all potential is gone. However, if somebody is alive and they experience tons of trauma, there's a good potential, even a good potential, that they can recover and move past that trauma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, hey, I can keep So going. if that is true, <laughs> yeah. right, then wouldn't you agree with me that the person being exploded it's still better to not be that person. You're, you're probably right, honestly. Like, you, you probably are, and I, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with you either. I'm just saying, like, rather, like, watch my wife die or die first. Like, I would I'd feel less upset me dying first. However, the thought of her having to watch me die actually is also bad. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I... But the potential exists. It's hard to answer because I haven't died yet. But the potential exists, but. and sure. I'm going to grant, I'm going to, like, grant a couple things yeah. <laughs> immediately. I 100% believe you that you would prefer to die in, instead of a loved one. I yeah. totally agree with that, uh -huh. okay? However, I would need you to concede back, though, that if a loved one close to you does die, that you still have potential to move past that scenario. That's true, and that's the beautiful thing about yeah. life. So if, yeah. if we're conceding that that is true, then it seems to me that the potential itself of being able to recover is superior to death. You know, you're right. Actually, you, this is a great example of you kind of making me think a little bit. And you're right. I am kind of changing my perspective. You still do have that potential if you're still alive to keep mm -hmm. going. You're right. But it's also it's conflicting because I wouldn't wish 
Liza to live a life. Yeah, like but they're that not. Ex- but they're, know, not but they're not exclusive. The reason, exclusive. They're the reason different. we're having a better but conversation, right. just so you know, right. I tend to match energy with people. So people yeah. are super combative. I'm super combative. Yeah. If they're cool and they're relaxed, I'm cool and relaxed. Yeah. No, you've kind of made me think different. Like yeah, you're, so you're right because if I had a baby, would I want my baby to grow up with no mom? No, but if it had to choose between me and the baby, I would want the baby to live and I die because they have the potential. To Which be, totally yeah. makes sense. So I think yeah. if um, my brother was in a war, yeah. that if my dad had a crystal ball and knew he was going to step on a landmine, that mm-hmm. he would want to trade places with him. You're right. I, However, I, right. if my brother did die in the war, yeah. I think that my father has the potential to over time either not necessarily heal completely from that trauma, yeah. but at least be able to cope with it over an elongated period of time. So if that's true, then you'd have to concede that men have to be the primary victim of war if they're the ones who are mostly dying. You're right. If they're the ones that are mostly dying, that's true. I do think that when other countries are invaded, oftentimes civilians are equally attacked a lot of the times. And Mm -hmm. in those situations, there's plenty of women that die. But you're right. Who's primarily losing mm -hmm. their life is the biggest loser. Right. Got it. So I guess overall, it would mostly be men. But if we're going to pillage a village and kill all the women and and essay all the women in that village, I think they're equal victims. I I think that's true. But I just want to kind of go back, though. You're right. right. That in almost every war that I'm aware of, women and children bore the brunt more than the men did. But in every war that I'm aware of, there was far more male deaths mm-hmm. combined with civilian and soldier deaths. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're, and, and if that's ends. like, I, again, because I don't know the stats, and if the mm-hmm. stats you're giving me are true and I believe you, then yeah, you're right. Men are a bigger victim because losing your life, you don't have a chance after right, that. Right, you don't have a chance. And to, I, I, no. could, I agree with that. However, there is no perfect victim and the people who die, their suffering ends there. The after effects of war, famine, homes gone, people starving to death, they are a continued victim. The, the people who died were a victim in their death, but they are dead, gone, no longer suffering. The people who remain yeah. after the war have to deal with the repercussions of the war for the rest of their lives, Agreed. even if they are able to I get over it. totally agree. Do you agree that people, if they're dead, have zero potential of recovering from traumas? If they're dead, yeah. Okay, so if they're alive, they do have the potential to recover from the trauma. The potential is there, but people what do is recover the from chance? trauma. Let's Not say everyone. I though. just want to say that the chance. Let's give it the worst possible chance. It's one percent. Let's say, right? It's the worst possible chance ever that they will recover. Maybe only one person in one hundred thousand mm-hmm. will recover. Isn't that still a better potential than being dead? Yes. Personally, if I watched my entire family die in front of me, Mm -hmm. if I watched my children be blown to shreds, take me with them because I don't want to. Right, you would, and I think I I agree with you. You would totally feel that way right then. Mm -hmm. But do you agree that the potential exists? The that, that over that over an elongated enough period of time through grief counseling and whatever else was available, that you might be able to psychologically reconcile and move past or at least deal with that event. The potential is there. Yes, that's How it. I- that's it. That's all we need. So if the potential is there, if it's just there, then I don't see how you could say that you could be the primary victim over the dead. That's my point then the potential's not there. So if they're dead, the potential, you're, you're removing the thing which we're arguing over, which is the potential. So if you say they're dead, I that's agree. Why, that's why I agree it's worse no to perfect, be dead. There is no perfect victim. The people who die fighting in the war are currently... I don't know what that means, currently, perfect victim. There's no way for someone to be a victim perfectly enough for everyone. Yeah. Well, if, we're not saying that perfectly enough for everyone. I'm saying all you, of them are victims. You saying... All of them Someone are has the potential that's creating the idea of the perfect victim that the, this person no. can get over it. Just but, because there's a possibility doesn't mean they're not suffering, even that. more so than the people so, who so, die. Hang on. Let me reconcile these positions. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just going to grant that there's no perfect, whatever that means. I think my understanding is there's no perfect definition that'll fit everybody's mold of what a victim is. Mm-hmm. But you and I can agree that if your brother gets blown up in front of you and you see that, you're both victims, Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, so our dispute isn't over whether you're both victims. We've already agreed. So we're, we're not saying they're perfect, imperfect, but we're agreeing that they're victims. Mm-hmm. You're the victim and your brother's the victim. We're just trying to determine which one of you is more of a victim. The potential for them to suffer is over, but the potential for me to keep suffering is still there. That's true, but the potential also exists for you to recover. So either way, it's like the no, potential... No, it's not either way. 
He, all potential's gone from him. No, I mean, the person who's living has the potential to suffer or the potential That's to true. recover, but it's not guaranteed. That's why I mean there's no perfect victim. The person dies, their suffering ends. But the person who keeps living, you can't guarantee that they can live the rest of so their lives being okay actually, knowing that is, their family's this dead. This is bizarre to me. I want to make sure I get this right. When you say there's no such thing as a perfect victim, mm -hmm. you're saying what you're actually saying. Now, I, I think I get it. Yeah. That you cannot ascertain this person has been more victimized than this person. Mm -hmm. That's what that means? I cannot wholeheartedly sit here and say that one person, men or women, suffer more in war. Everyone. The people fighting, people on the opposing side, people on whatever side you're on. There are victims in both sides who necessarily don't agree. <laughs> okay, so hang on. You're in a convenience store, mm -hmm. okay? And a robber walks in. Okay, and he steals a Snickers bar from the clerk, mm -hmm. and then he walks over and beats you half to death and essays you. Okay, who was more victimized? Me. So then we can ascertain that there can be levels of victimization. There can be levels. So, so then it can. you say a perfect victim, and I say this means we can't judge who's more victimized than another. You said yes, but we clearly can. To me. Yeah, to you. I would feel like a. Pig fucking victim. You think that, that most there's... rational agents would think? No, he didn't have to see it. He didn't watch it. He just had a Snickers bar stolen from him. That's it. He didn't see anything that happened to you. But Which you one of you he's... is more of a victim? Okay. Everyone's a victim. Not the guy who you stole. You can't ascertain that the guy Maybe who is, lost but... a Snickers bar has been less victimized than the woman who's been half beaten to death and essayed? Really? That's You're exactly getting back to my point of the perfect victim. Yes, I know. That's why I'm asking you this question. I just need you to say, nope, they're equally victimized. He is a victim of death or a theft. I'm a victim of my bodily autonomy being disregarded. So I just want to let you know the entailment of this. Just so you know, if I go stand outside an SA clinic and they go, and some gal and I get in a conversation, she says, I was horribly essayed <laughs> by a man. I'm going to be like, oh, yeah? That's just like when a guy broke into my house and stole a video game. Uh, again, you're going to disregard what I'm saying, but again, you're going back to the topic of someone mm -hmm. being a Does more perfect victim than someone else. Do you think she'd be like, that's in no way, shape, or form, compared whatever you think the victim of having your favorite video game stolen was in comparison to me being brutally essayed? Don't you think that any rational agent would be like, uh, no, I really don't think... I'm going to leave it at what... Everyone suffers for more. I can't pick men, women. Everyone suffers. Okay, if you forget the war for one, a second. Okay. I'm just asking about the Snickers bar at this point. Is the guy who got a Snickers bar stolen from him as much of a victim as when, if he doesn't see any of this, the guy turns around, beats the holy tar out of a chicken ass azer. <laughs> Are they both equally victims in your mind? That doesn't touch on the topic of war. That's how we got on this topic, right? Yeah, because war, the reason I'm using that's... this external analogy is because you said it's impossible to ascertain if somebody has been more victimized than another because that's what you mean by perfect victim. Everyone takes in trauma differently. I can't say that that person who was stolen from isn't gonna ne is it logical for them to feel like the biggest perfect fucking victim? No, but I don't know what they've gone through in their previous life. Maybe theft is a big fucking trigger for them. There's no perfect victim. If you don't want to agree with that, that's fine. Okay, I'll leave it there. Okay. One thing really quick, then I'm gonna read a couple chats. Nick, can you uh, pull up the thing? So when it comes to the Ukrainian other side, for the entirety of the Ukraine war, this is a recent, this is a modern conflict, men between the ages of 18 to 60 were barred, were banned from leaving the country, whereas all women could flee the country if they were so inclined. Knowing this, about this specific conflict, um, that men were forced to stay, they, gangs of military police would abduct men, women could flee, they could go to Stockholm, they could go to London, they could move, you know, go west. You'd see these, there are these posts of while the Ukrainian men were dying, for example, the Ukrainian women were on Tinder getting fucked by men in London, Stockholm, etc., going to the club, partying, whatever. This occurs to me that it's an actually fantastic example of female privilege. 
and as, as, as it relates to this conversation of who's the primary victim of war, given that the Ukrainian government allowed all the women, if they wanted to, to leave the country, all the men had to stay and fight. Well, not all of them had to fight, but all of them had to stay and potentially be <laughs> subject to having to fight, knowing this, at least when it comes to the Ukrainian conflict. Can I get an answer to who's the primary victim of the Ukrainian war, men or women? Just in that sense? Okay. Men, because men had to stay behind. What about you? I would say the same thing. I think the men are dying, especially because women were let go or whatever. However, yeah, the they country. could flee. Like, obviously, the men. Um, but I, th I guess based off that specific scenario, the men, yeah. The men, which is why earlier, a couple hours ago, I said I would fight for men to also have the ability to choose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I disagree with that. So men yeah. are the victim there, and I would support them not being the victim. <laughs> Yeah, I would say men. I think that's the admirable, you know, dignified thing to do. Okay. Yeah, in that context, men. Men. All right, two chats. We have Warlord to the Gypsy. Do you not believe in wisdom of the crowd? Do you believe that I, as a man, will fight a war for any of these women on the panel or even you? I think it's you. Oh. We're trying to figure out who the Gypsy is. That's the, the gypsy. Oh, okay. Mass, all right. Who is the Gypsy? Yes. Uh, masculine. Oh, is it not coming up? Maybe I didn't click it. Okay. Donated 100. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Hey, Pink, stand up and show off that. That ass. In your mini skirt. Also give it a shake for the panel. Wow, okay. Right. So masculine. Or if I could see you, I'm all we money. could do a little show for show. Okay, you want to good to know. Yeah. Uh, a couple more questions here. So I'm, I'm, still, I'm still really hung up on this. <laughs> I got to ask you, okay? What? If we were like friends and we were having a heart to heart, Okay, mm -hmm. and you opened up about like an essay survivor story, and I said, "Yeah, that's kind of like when I got my video game stolen from me." Would that in any way seem coherent to you? No, of course not. I actually have a lot of close male friends, and some of the men I've gotten the closest to have confided in me that they were sexually assaulted. Sure, at sure, some point. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand that. I feel like if they're talking context. to me about their in that context, it's quite rude to try to compare something like that. Yeah, but similar traumas, it's not so rude. If you talk to me about being sexually assaulted, yeah. I would feel completely compassionate and want to keep going there. But if he co so if he compared something we... so much lighter to that, I'd but take it as But then doesn't this seem like there's a hierarchy here? I do think there's degrees to victimization. Totally. There's some things in life that are way worse than other. I don't compare pain because certain things to certain people can be, let's just say uh, uh, someone was essayed as a kid, right? Some people do come out of that and change their life. Some people can't get over it. And the people that can't get over it and end up, you know, maybe turning to drugs and they die young or something on accident, yeah. they're not weaker or a worse victim. I'm not comparing their pain and being like, why weren't they strong enough? And I, what? Like, I would never think that way. I feel compassion. Yeah, because which every human comparable. being, but we all have a different genetic makeup. We all have a different brain. So something to me that could be really traumatic to so someone else, like abortion, for example, my abortion, even though I'm pro-choice, it's not something I regret, but it's something I've deeply been sad about because I want to be a mom so bad. There's other women that have had abortions and don't think twice about it and it doesn't feel traumatic to them even though my abortion did feel like a trauma to me. So it's just like we can't compare the way someone else reacts to something to the same then way. I don't understand again. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, sorry. So why then, if you cannot judge from your metric whether or not something seems to be a comparable trauma or not, if somebody did respond to you and said, oh, I was essayed too. You say, okay, that's appropriate to have that conversation. But if their pain threshold to having their favorite video game stolen, somehow in their brain they rationalize that as being equal trauma to what's happened to you, then how could you ever judge it was inappropriate for them to utilize that as a way of trying to have this combo with you. you does know, that, doesn't that seem absurd? It does seem absurd, but the thing is, is it would seem absurd to me in my mind in real time having that conversation with that person, but the way that I would react would be in my head to be like, instead of getting outwardly offended, I would probably be like, okay, this person and I are completely different people. I'm going to validate them because there's no point in being rude to them, but I'm going to know that they're not the person for me to confide think in. that's ridiculous? I would think that's ridiculous. Because yeah. it's that? ridiculous, right? It is. I think so, but that's what I'm saying is I'd think it's ridiculous and then think to myself, maybe this isn't the person I want to share my trauma with. I'm just going to kind of nod and go like, all right, which I've been doing half this conversation. It's like, I'm like, okay, that's what they think. I respect you for thinking that. I know I think differently, but like, I'm just going to choose to be like, this isn't my space where I'm going to talk about my trauma. I don't 
comfortable here because they don't get it. And it's okay if they don't get it and be like, I'm just going to nod my head and agree and then go to my people that I do feel like get it. I'm not going to shit okay, on every so single person for having a different opinion. I just wanted to make I, sure. That's them. Just I just want to make sure that you understood that. In my head, I can think that, that people are ridiculous. totally wrong. I yeah. just choose to be like, I literally haven't lived their life. So I don't know why they feel that way about video games. It just means they're not my type of human to connect with. They're someone else's type of human to connect with. And I can just be like, all right, dude. And then I can go turn to the people who get me and feel validated. I'm not going to invalidate other people. I'm just going to choose to not spend my time in that I space think on the anymore. show from now on, when a woman <laughs> has like a horrifying story, I'm going to be like, that's nothing. One time my favorite video game was stolen from me. <laughs> and that person would be like, wow, in the future, I don't want to talk to this guy anymore. He sounds like an idiot. You can think that to yourself. Because it sounds ridiculous. It right? does to me too. I'm not going to invalidate them. Right. I'm going to move on. A couple more questions though, here, and then we have a bunch of pre-show notes. Yeah. Do we need men? Yes. Starting with you. Going around the table. Do I need a man? No. Does the world need a man? The world and needs humans, people in general. Do I personally need a man? No. Does the world need women, men, 